just as we speak, uh, a valedictory uh, ceremony is being held for James uh, Doche Justice, uh, who was acting in the stead of Justice Anin Yeboa. Uh, as we speak now, we're expecting the Chief Justice nominee, uh, Getrud Tokunu, to make a public appearance after this press statement uh, by the minority in Parliament. Let's get more on this. Legal Affairs Correspondent uh, Joseph Akabla is joining us uh, live with details on this. Uh, Joe, what more can you report? Uh, we'll, we'll get uh, Joseph Blay for you shortly, but in your shots now, you have uh, some justices of the Supreme Court. We can listen in. Speak to you, especially from where I'm sitting. <laughs> you must each find in your life and space a man or woman who can command you on major decisions of your life. Um, for those who have been wondering and still wondering why I left by the grace of God a reasonably thriving life at the bar and took what I call an oath of poverty and service. That reason is my Lord Justice Doche. He commanded me. And I do not have an iota of regret that I obeyed. My Lord, thank you for commanding me. <laughs> and to date, in private conversations, I still address him as Papa. But he addresses me, since I became a judge, as my brother. And it just tells you the unique character of my Lord. Papa, I'm extremely grateful you have impacted me in a way that none has done before. And as for the life on the court, the things that have been said, um, bear that out. <coughs> My Lord, but I, because I have the privilege of, of knowing you that closely, I think that my word of acknowledgement will be incomplete if I didn't add Apart from God, your own source of strength, of encouragement, and moderation, which is Mrs. Sylvia Doce. Mommy, thank you. Because what a lot of us take for granted is that my Lord goes home burdened, and troubled, and worried, and anxious sometimes. And it is Mommy who decompresses him. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes I'm, I'm saying this on authority. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and makes him the, the, the good man that he is, who has so touched, mentored, influenced, and guided most of us. I have told him that I've prayed away this day. I never wish that this day was going to come. I don't know what his plans are and who he will entrust me to. Um, otherwise, I feel really orphaned on this side of the court. And, and the reason also is that, for those of you who know me, I'm not a hawk, but I'm very stubborn in my views. And, and my Lord Justice Doche is one of the few exceptional and extraordinary people who has a very unique way of saying, and it's not pretentious, it's just genuine. He tells you yes, but if you are discerning, the yes can mean a no. And so I'll miss your guidance, um, but as a lot of us have said, um, I have been looking for allies to conspire how we can prevent him from relocating to Pando. Well, Justice Yoni Kulendi uh, just gone by in your shots there, eulogizing uh, James uh, Doche, who was acting as Chief Justice. Now we'll see Getro Tokuno uh, if all is set and the presidential uh, 
um, inauguration is done. Obviously, we'll see her as the next Chief Justice, but we can uh, get a lot more on this uh, story as the minority is also giving their green light. But now there's uh, a bit of an update for you on the Chief Justice nominee, Gertrude Tokono. She's uh, speaking uh, for, at that uh, validatory uh, ceremony held uh, in honor of uh, James Doche. Justice was acting uh, upon that green light coming through from the minority. We can listen in. I have served on our nation's highest court. One only has to glance through the profile of His Lordship Victor Jones Maulong Doche, and the victor comes first, <laughs> and catch a glimpse of how he spends his time to appreciate the true jewel that he is to his family, to his people, the Church of God, the judiciary and the judicial service of Ghana and to this nation. As I have reflected on today's occasion and its essence, my mind has often gone to how true treasures are formed and obtained. Gold and diamonds are not to be found easily. They are hidden in the womb of the earth for man to strive to bring to himself. Oil, we are told, forms deep in rocks over millions of years and may be gathered only at great cost. And God in his infinite wisdom gives us the treasures of beautiful humanity, such as his lordship, Victor Jones Maulong Doche, after God himself has done the work of shaping them in the quiet of home, faith, and community, away from the eyes of those who receive the gift of their character and their labor. This morning, in all humility, I'd like to assure His Lordship Justice Doche and the Lord our God, who gave us this precious man, that as an institution and community, the judicial service and the judiciary truly appreciate the gift of the man and the gift of grace that he is. In 2020, I had the opportunity of interviewing Justice Doche for a special feature in the bench, the annual journal of the Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana. And I came away with a deeper view of the influences that have shaped his passion for fairness, justice, service, and worship. And we saw him dance in worship a few minutes ago. He told the bench about how he lost his father early in life, the injustices his family suffered, and the struggles of his widowed mother to look after him and his brothers. It was an eye-opener that allowed understanding for his deep passion for social and substantial justice, and his philanthropy and service to every group that he belongs to. He also told us about following his mother to choir practice. And this explains his exuberant love for hymns and dancing. We are told that like all God-made treasures, the birth of a pearl takes time. It occurs when an irritant such as sand gets into the shell of an oyster. In response to the pain, the oyster produces a protective coating called naka to fit between the two shells and protect it from the destructive influences of the irritant. Over a period spanning six months to four years, these layers of nacre released to coat the irritant and protect the oyster and its shell form the beautiful gem and stunning beauties of the pearl. As beneficiaries of this process, human beings enjoy the adornment and grace of pearls not knowing how much it costs the oyster in quiet pain, strain, endeavor, and fighting effort to give us that treasure. The philanthropy experienced by Justice Doche's communities, the passion for service that we have enjoyed in the judiciary through the never-ending list of councils and committees that he serves on, and the fearless quest for substantial justice that rises out of the pages of the innumerable rulings and judgments that he has authored 
speak volumes of his courageous response to irritations of life, such as oppression of orphans, deprivation of vulnerable women, the looting of state coffers, and abuse of public office. One only has to encounter his desperate quest to overcome abuse with justice in decisions such as Board of Governors Achimota School versus Ni Akunote II, Platinum Equities Limited and Lands Commission, judgment dated 20th May 2020, and Martin Alamisi Amidu versus Attorney General, Waterville Holders BVI Limited and Alfred Agbesi Woyome, judgment dated 14 June 2013, to understand the fighter for justice for the deprived in the nation, Injustice Duce. A champion of women and the vulnerable, the determination to break the tide of bullying and compel compliance with the spirit of the law and the constitution is easily seen in his groundbreaking and incisive opinions in Gregory versus Tandor the Fourth and Hansen, judgment delivered on 12 May 2010 and the second Mensa versus Mensa, judgment dated 22nd February 2012, that we have heard of this morning. My Lord, in Gregory versus Tandor the fourth versus Hansen, you began your lead opinion with a famous quotation from William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, a quote you had expressed in your earlier decision in the case of Clement versus Eniete, Judgment dated 4th June 2008, one of your very early judgments in the High Court 2nd D, when you started to establish yourself as a clear minded judge who not only presided over cases but did so independently as a fierce contender for rights and one who is not afraid to find the kernel of truth within the law so as to give not just the letter of the law by the spirit of the law. These are the famous words from Act 4, Scene 3 in Julius Caesar. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the flats, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyages of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat. We must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures." Unquote. It is in the spirit of seizing for Ghana, the moment for establishing just parameters for, for what I will describe as the difficult to define relationship called marriage. That you opine that, quote, the time has come for this court to institutionalize the principle of jurisprudence of equality in the sharing of marital property after divorce of all properties acquired during the subsistence of a marriage in appropriate cases." Unquote. As a jurist, Justice Doche never failed to demand and apply what is not only legally correct, but what would produce a just outcome and a level playing field for all, high and low, rich and poor leadership. In the few years that I've had the privilege and opportunity of working with him almost on a daily basis on this apex court, I have watched with admiration his keen and unflagging intelligence and alertness, his depth of preparation, and the clarity and wisdom with which he leads and presides over panels and the Supreme Court as president of the Supreme Court. These qualities have been deployed daily in the service of the nation, sometimes without the public noticing and appreciating. But he never took a day off from doing his best. He was not here for the applause. His was a commitment to his conscience, the law, and the good of the nation, as he saw best. If Ghana is to become the nation that it must be, we can only pray that there will be more like him as he takes a bow and leaves the bench today. Distinguished colleagues and guests, the attrition rate of the great and good from the Supreme Court this year leaves us all with great sadness. But I personally cannot help but feel almost orphaned by the situation as I prepare to serve this nation where their big shoes 
stood. To lose the help and wisdom of His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulom Doche, a proud son of Pando, a quintessential example of the beautiful pearl, at a time like this is a big blow. And I know that we shall all miss him very dearly. It is my prayer that our celebration of this distinguished jurist will carry on into our continued service through this institution as we all strive to emulate his examples of good faith, patriotism, hard work, diligence, and devout faith, delivered with constant humor and wisdom through stories from Pando, Commonwealth Hall, and his journeys around the world. My Lord, we will miss your never-ending store of funny stories, told with the intention of teaching wisdom and grace, including how a man christened Victor has come to be known as Jones. <laughs> we all wish you a pleasant and restful retirement. For over four decades, you have served the law, 23 years of which have been to the nation and its citizens. You have pursued the course of justice and expanded freedom. You have made this nation more safe, this nation safer and more secure. You have helped to build this democracy we are enjoying now. You absolutely deserve this rest, even though I know you will be too restless to enjoy it fully. Mama Sylvia, please get him to rest. I plead with you that however you continue to serve, please pace yourself and take time to enjoy the beautiful hills and waters of the Volta region. Thank you very much, my Lord Victor Jones Maulam Duche, for the service and for the example you are leaving us with. May the Lord continue to bless you with good health and strength of mind and body and with the love and comfort of family. And obviously, uh, if you're married to an ever, you should pick up a few lines. Chief Justice uh, Normani Getru Tokono there, uh, indicating how dearly she would miss uh, the acting Chief Justice uh, Jones uh, Duche, but she's also been making uh, some points about the high attrition rate of fine brains uh, leaving the bench this year and the fact that she will be feeling very big shoes. We'll wait to see uh, what next uh, the uh, parliament, uh, in terms of their decision, will take on her nomination and what the next steps will be. You're still uh, watching uh, Join News today. Let's uh, take you to some other stories because residents, motorists and business owners along the Dawenya to Pumbaria uh, area and the community uh, on that stretch of uh, Accra are raising concerns uh, about uh, the road which uh, they are calling on government to complete. Uh, they have been raising some concerns over the uh, years about the stretch and the traffic situation in the community. Government in June 2022 officially commenced uh, the expansion of the 17-kilometer-long Tema uh, to Central University uh, section of the N1 highway uh, expected uh, to last for 18 months. Uh, we'll get the concerns of the residents shortly, uh, but just a bit of a break uh, once more. Let's hear from the acting Chief Justice James Doshi. I promised my family I was not going to cry, so I will, I will soldier on. <laughs> All the good things have been said, but today is a day of showing appreciation. First of all, I want to show appreciation to Almighty God for His grace and mercy that has sustained me through my life's journey from Pando and Fuerta Ho. Sekendi and Accra until this day. In two days' time, I will be 70 years old. I also give, I also appreciate my dear parents, Alex Kosi Doche and Victoria Kesia Doche, for bringing us up 
They sowed the seed, nurtured it, and especially our mother, who had to endure the rash realities of a single mother when the old man died in 1969, when I was in secondary form three. In those days, there, were, there was no interstate succession law. And I can say, I told the, C, the CJ designate has omitted certain parts of my interview. I will <laughs> not go back to that interview. I also give and appreciate, I also appreciate His Excellency President Kufo, who gave me the opportunity upon the recommendation of the Bar Council. The Bar Council, <laughs> the Bar Council nominated myself, Justice Eni Yeboah, the former Chief Justice, Justice Mafusau, Justice Francis Kobier, and others to the High Court bench. The Bar Council again indicated that Justice Eni Yeboah and myself should go to the Court of Appeals straight away. Justice Redu said he was not going to allow anybody to come from the <coughs> bench straight to Court of Appeal. But that if we distinguish ourselves within, at, at the, on, the, on the bench, he will elevate us. And to the goodness of God, we were sworn into the High Court on the 18th of June 2002. And on the 23rd of September 2003, Justice Enyebo and myself were elevated to the Court of Appeal. <laughs> and on the 18th, on the 11th of June 2008, Justices Rose Constanzo Wusu, myself, Justice Enyebo, and Justice Paul Bafuboni were again elevated to the Supreme Court. I cannot help but say that if you find God, you have found everything. And if you lose God, you have lost everything in life. And if you put your faith in God's hands, you will see God's hands in everything that you do. I also appreciate the chiefs and people of Pando, our paramount chief, Togwe Dagadu. I also appreciate the chief of my division, that's Pando Azavi, and then Pando, Pando Chakwe, all the chiefs and elders. I also appreciate the chiefs and queen mothers of my mother's hometown, Amfueta. I appreciate the chiefs and queen mothers of Ho, where I went to do my national service in 1979 and ended up spending 23 years of my practicing life as a lawyer in Ho, and it was there that I found a beautiful wife, <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> and I also recognize her family, the Ajima family from Abutia, for the support, and my sisters-in-law, some of them are here, from Puerto and my in-laws. I have, we have a very deep family connection in Pando, such that one of our cousins, Mr. Frank Obed Mensa, he took, uh, he took charge of Mawena, my senior brother, about whom, if I want to speak, I can speak for the whole day because Mawena was the one who nurtured me and planned my career path for me. If I write my memoirs in the next one and a half years, I believe, I will point out the mess I would have found myself but for his uh, direction and advice. <laughs> I also recognize my junior brother whom we call, he's called Seth, but we call him Seto. <laughs> he's a retired banker, he's there right now, and his dear wife, my brother, Mawana's wife, Sister Rosabel, is there. Sister Ivy, thank all of you very much. And I have 
a lot of children. Apart from my natural children, Mause, Seli, Selase, I have other children, a lot of them, from the family. My, my house has been a house, a home for all my brother's children. Esi, Josephine, Delali, Joan, Maulawe, our, health, our house help who stayed with us for close to 25 years. And she was brought by her grandfather, who was a very good client of mine, and said, lawyer, take care of my granddaughter for me. And I will say that I've been fortunate in this life to have had very good friends. I met a group of people in Commonwealth Hall, we call ourselves the boys. <laughs> I see some of them at the back there. I can identify and recognize lawyer Kweku Brenu, <laughs> Smiley Bannerman, wave so that they see you, and then, <laughs> and then ju 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 Judata, the Jude. Uh -huh. Thank you. These are my very good friends, and we have kept our friendship from the, the university, as Professor Justice Kote said, from 73 up to 76 in some cases, and then 78 in others. We have kept our friendship, and I thank you all very much. Now, I want to appreciate my in-laws. I mentioned Sister Rosabeth, Sister Ivy. I also want to mention Sister Connie and Mama Trato, one of the queen mothers from Ho Dome. As Togwe Teprehodo said, he came to join us in the Attorney General's office in Ho at the time, before he was subsequently made the former chief of Afwega, is now the president of the Water Region House of Chiefs. Togwe Ajayi, chief of Ho Ziavi, sorry, Ziavi traditional area, they are independent entities, so they are not appendage of any other town. <laughs> Togwe, thank you very much. Now, as I stated, I was elevated in 2002, and it was Justice Willidou who was then the Chief Justice. And soon after, he was sick, Justice Aqua took over, and I had some very good working relationship with Justice Aqua, because he was then the judge in Ho, and he was a very good and hardworking judge. So he gave me the opportunity, I served on many committees. Some of these committees were chaired by Mrs. Wood. That's how come I got to know Mrs. Wood very well. And so when he, she became Chief Justice, I really worked with her on a number of committees. And as you know, she was the longest Chief Justice of Ghana for 10 years. In fact, my career, I owe my career to my senior at the bar, lawyer Armstrong Ametobla Akwaku of Betomevo Chambers, now deceased. It was then, whilst I was there, that I discovered Benson Unchukwe. He was in the sixth form at Wani School, and he and the son of lawyer Akwaku were mates. And Benson started producing plays. And he invited myself and Roya Kwaku <laughs> to watch and some of these, those plays. And I told myself, this is a genius. <laughs> and so he must be encouraged. And that's how come our friendship started from he in the sixth form and to the university. And he has become, he became president of the Ghana Bar Association. The same recognition goes to Justice Gaiwu. I also met Justice Gaiwu when he was in the sixth form. He comes from the same town with my wife, and he was introduced to me by the father, and seven days after, the father engaged me as his company solicitor. Seven days after that introduction, the father died. 
and I was faced with the problem of managing the estate for them as their legal advisor. All the rest they say is history. So he is also one of my younger brothers. In 2001, I was nominated by the Paul Elu Jamfi led administration of the GBA to the Legal Service Board. So I served on the Legal Service Board. While serving there, I was elevated to uh, the High Court. So I relinquished my position. And as you know, when I came to the bench, I worked with the current Attorney General as an ADR mediator. A case he was handling in the High Court was referred to me as an ADR mediator. That's how I got to know him. I was a young, but I could see that he was full of zeal and uh, was very pushing, you know. <laughs> and then I really admired him at that stage and we became friends until now. I've also been privileged to be the chair of UHAS Council. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Lydia Ziato, has come to say some very good things about me. But I think I have not been all that pleasant, but she <laughs> refused to say the bad things about me. Because sometimes I can be very hard on her, but then, uh, as I said, Ghanaians, we are very polite. We don't say bad things when we, the occasion, occasion demands. So, Prof, thank you very much. And the registrar, yeah, Amankwa Okuni, thank you for coming. And I also thank Professor John Japon, the media past vice chancellor. In 2021, I was also appointed as board chair of Accra Academy. And Accra Academy was the school I went to for my sixth form, also on the advice of my brother, Mawena. He was then in Legon, and he said, well, Jones, if you want to come to Legon with ease, then come to Accra Academy, sixth form. And to Accra Academy, I went, and the result was fantastic. Thank you, Marina, again. And you want to call that a farewell message from Justice Jones Duchy. And that's all we have for you on Joy News today. Log on to myjoyonline.com. We have more stories for you there. My name is Blessed Sukhan. Thanks for watching.